TGR. Hey guys, it's Onyx, your boy from TGR, of course. And um, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. Uh, it's the first of a new series that we're going to start as a whole. And uh, it's essentially a video essay. I'm um, using Sekiro as the game I'm going to be discussing. And I really want to get your constructive criticism, some feedback. I want to see if you guys like this type of content. Should I do more of it? And where did I mess up? Because I'm sure I made some sort of mistake on it. Anyway, uh, let's just get started. Again, uh, I hope you enjoy it. But first, I got to get my Pikachu ears for... Uh, for my next session. See what happens, eh? Ah, uh, here we go. Just playing Sekiro. One of the best games ever. Oh my god. Oh, look at this guy. Let's see what's going on with him. What the fuck? Oh my god. Okay, alright. Well, I wasn't expecting this shit. Oh my god. Okay, alright. Here we go. What? There's a guy right there? Help me, bro! <laughs> Okay, well, this is bullcrap. Oh my god, they just keep coming at me! Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, well, that's bullcrap. I'm not even gonna try. You know why? Because this game is hard. But that's okay. When discussing and looking at difficulty in video games, there's always this common point of view. You always look at older games that were more difficult. Games like Contra or the Mega Mans of the Nintendo Entertainment System. At the time, there were also the arcades to consider. Those games, however, were designed on purpose to be difficult to, you know, take as many coins as possible before a player would either give up or, you know, try to reach the end of the game. These things did all change, however, when gaming came into the home. At this point, developers had to think of ways to make the game difficult, but also not impossible. After this, the gaming industry as a whole kind of went into a, uh, a more guided approach. Difficulty became something that was ultimately up to the player, at least for the most part. Around the 32-bit generation, we, they, the industry introduced a lot of uh, difficulty options. Games like Resident Evil, uh, for example, would give you the option of easy or normal. It wasn't really until later, however, that the industry started delving into more cinematic games. These cinematic experiences became more handholdy, and this changed the industry for the better or worse. In 2009, Demon Souls released and reinvigorated the industry. After that, From Software, its developer, released a spiritual successor titled Dark Souls. This game and the prior one were really, really difficult and it felt fresh in an industry that had been taken away by cinematic experiences that, again, were very hand-holding. Comparisons were made to the series so much, in fact, that even modern games like Cuphead ended up being called the Dark Souls of platformers by certain publications. And that's kind of why we're here today. I want to talk to you guys about difficulty and what I feel is the right mindset to have when discussing difficult video games. The overall discussion surrounding Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is what sparked me to make this video. To start, I want to lay out the ideas behind my point of view. There's going to be three major examples to support my idea. Uh, the first example is difficulty versus accessibility and what I mean when I discuss accessibility. The second point is earning a reward versus being given a reward. And the final point will be the design philosophy behind the game versus the player desire. So let's go ahead and look over difficulty versus accessibility. To start, I do want to mention that accessibility in general is a major issue that the gaming industry has to work on. There aren't really as many options as there should be for disabled gamers to really get into the, the hobby as much as it should be, really. The fact that a game like the Spyro Trilogy it comes out on launch day without subtitles is just horrible. It signifies that there's a major issue. However, when I use accessibility in this video, I want you to know I'm focusing specifically on how easy it is for a game to reach a wider generalized audience. With that said, I'm aware that when you have an ultra difficult game, it can become more of a niche title, but that will always come at a price. Yes, I want games to be appreciated by more people around the world, but at what cost will that appreciation come at? Should an artist let go of their vision so more people can play their game? That question brings me to my next point, 
which is earning a reward versus being given a reward. Games like Dragon Quest XI, which are JRPGs at their basic levels, feel like they reward the player quite consistently. Levels, items, new powers, weapons, etc. There's always something to look forward to. But these rewards come without excessive effort. Sometimes the games will have a difficulty spike, but it's an overall easy experience. This is why you can customize the difficulty before you begin your adventure by adding an extra uh, parameters to the game, by making the enemies more difficult or things like that. This arguably makes the game more interesting and provides satisfaction for earning your rewards. Multiplayer games, like Apex Legends, also provide this by giving rewards for surviving a PvP environment However, that is a very, very different ballpark, as those games are just naturally difficult because you're going up against other humans. Games like Devil May Cry 5 also provide a unique challenge where you can beat the game with the you know, natural developed challenge of going against the computer enemies and just surviving to the end. But there's also this added carrot on a stick, which is the style meter. Trying to get that triple S rank in as many battles as possible incentivizes players to develop a fun playstyle that is unique to them. Though it's entirely optional, you don't have to get triple S ranks to beat the game. I also do want to add that when when thinking of Sekiro and thinking of the, the difficulty that it does present, there is also a genuine satisfaction that you get from beating these bad guys there's i haven't felt acceleration like this in a very very long time so i want you to get i want you guys to keep that in mind when you think about uh you know earning a reward like i mentioned earlier versus being given a reward okay you earn that reward you earn that victory versus it just feeling like you know something that you just barely had to work for and then we move on to games like Sekiro, which are more streamlined in the sense that you play them a very specific way. You have a variety of weapons and skills that you can use to tackle each roadblock and each boss, which in, in this game have weaknesses to certain abilities and skills, which actually take me back to Mega Man and games of the, of the good old days, if you will. So this kind of design leads to player experimentation. And when you discover what works for you, then you as an individual feel the satisfaction that the developers intended to provide, which leads me to my final point. Design philosophy versus player desire. Sometimes we as consumers really want the desire and experience to cater to our specific wants and needs. We would like Sekiro to be another great FromSoft experience. We want Splatoon to be, you know, a great third person shooter as it looks like. But this takes away from what the designers behind those games aimed as a goal of theirs when they were developing that title. Just like certain foods, movies and music are just simply not for everyone the same applies to video games a difficult game that has amazing payoff may not be everyone's cup of tea and that's totally fine i, I feel like there's this ideology out there that people have that everybody should feel the same way that they do and that's i think that's misguided the specific game was designed with a certain player and experience in mind so, in a recent interview with Game Informer, Hidetaka Miyazaki, the director of Sekiro, had this to say when it came to the game being more accessible in comparison to Bloodborne or Dark Souls. Quote, I'm not sure if saying it's more accessible is the best answer, but we have tried to make it easier for people to access every part of this shinobi's arsenal. In a previous title, you had an area or a boss that could only be defeated by magic. That would be an issue because people are specializing in their build and we've created this unnecessary wall for them. This way of building the game, it gives us greater freedom and it gives the player greater freedom to decide how they want to tackle this or to encourage them to try to find something else and to keep adding to their arsenal and to use every little bit of it to defeat these challenges." End quote. The game is designed to be played how the person behind the controller wants to tackle those challenges. Adding an easy mode to this, though not entirely diminishing the return of satisfaction, will most definitely take away from it, in my opinion. I myself wondered early on if an easy game might have made the game more enjoyable, because I just really wasn't happy with the difficulty. However, I put that mindset to the side and focused on how I needed to play the game following the rules that were set by the game. 
At that point, I was able to conquer the challenges that came up and no longer felt like an easy mode was needed. When we begin to think outside of our boxes, outside of these points of views that we have, and think, what does the developer behind this game want me to do with this obstacle? Then this amazing communication be uh, between designer and player starts in such amazing ways. So to wrap this up, I really do want to leave you with just one thought. If Sekiro or Cuphead or any other video game is kicking your ass, take a break, stop running your head against the wall, think about what you can do differently. Think about what the designers wanted you to do and what options you have as a player. And go back. One of the best experiences in gaming could be waiting for you on the other side of that wall. All right, I'm taking these off. Anyway, tell me what you guys think. I hope it was a it was a good you know point of view. It's obviously very subjective, and I'm sure people have talked about it already. Uh, this is a heated discussion on difficulty and what it means to have an easy game and an accessible game. So, um, again, constructive criticism. Please give me feedback, and if you want me to do more of these, I will gladly do them. They are this was very fun, and I want to do them again. Uh, but anyway. Uh, thanks for watching, and I uh, see you guys on the next one. Like what you saw? Check out some of our other videos, and be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest content. Thanks for your support, and thanks for watching.